Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Traces of an ancient Slavic civilization found in New York. In recent years, archaeologists and historians have made some astounding discoveries about the early history of the United States. One of the most remarkable of these discoveries is the recent uncovering of traces of an ancient Slavic civilization on the beaches of Brighton and Brooklyn, New York. The findings are both shocking and intriguing. Piles of huge megaliths, or rather what was left of them, were piled on the beach's breakwaters, and the stones were broken and piled in a pile, and the stones were covered with writings, drawings, and faces. The faces are clearly Slavic in appearance, not modern of course, but the way the Slavs were depicted in the chronicles. Blocks comparable in size with blocks of the Egyptian pyramids bear traces of processing, holes, cuts, etc. The first and the most important question is, why the US authorities have destroyed the archaeological monument, and judging by what we see, it is invaluable from a historical and archaeological point of view. The discovery of an ancient Slavic civilization on the shores of the United States raises many questions, and it is bound to change our understanding of early human history in America. Some of the questions that come to mind include, who were the Slavs who lived in America? When did they arrive in America and how did they get here? What caused the decline of the Slavic civilization in America? Why did the US authorities destroy the archaeological monument? It is clear that the discovery of an ancient Slavic civilization in America has opened up new avenues of research. The findings suggest that the history of America is far more complex and multifaceted than previously thought. What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Once upon a time, in the small town of Iron, Texas, a mysterious discovery was made that would leave many scratching their heads in curiosity. Carl Bogue and Don Patton, two local residents, had stumbled upon an old cowboy boot while exploring a creek in the area back in 1980. Upon closer inspection, Bogue and Patton noticed that the boot was no ordinary piece of footwear. It appeared to contain a strange object inside, and upon further examination, they realized that it was a fossilized human foot. This discovery was particularly surprising, because it demonstrated that living tissue fossils could form in much less time than previously believed. The age of the boot, which was estimated to have been made around 1950, added to the intrigue of the discovery. How could a human foot become fossilized so quickly, especially in a modern piece of footwear? Many theories were proposed, but none provided a definitive answer. What do you think? The discovery of an object in the Libyan desert with a shape resembling that of a flying saucer has caused a great deal of excitement among archaeologists and scientists alike. The unusual shape and size of the object have led many to speculate about its origin and purpose. While some may be tempted to jump to conclusions about the object being of alien origin, it is important to consider other possibilities, including the potential for advanced ancient technology. The history of ancient civilizations is full of stories and myths about advanced technologies that were lost to time, and it is possible that this object may be evidence of such technology. One of the most intriguing aspects of the object is its eyes, which measures between 40 to 46 meters in diameter. 
This size suggests that the object was not meant for personal transportation or observation, but rather for a larger purpose. Further examination of the object could reveal clues about its construction and the materials used to create it. If it is determined that the object was made with advanced materials, this could point to an ancient civilization with highly advanced technological capabilities. There are also many questions surrounding the object's purpose. Was it used for transportation? Or communication? Was it a weapon? Or some sort of advanced energy device? These questions may never be fully answered. What do you think? Education is a crucial aspect of human development, shaping our knowledge, skills, and abilities. It is through education that individuals acquire the tools necessary to navigate and succeed in the world. However, the quality and effectiveness of education largely depend on the system and approach used to impart knowledge. Our current education system is flawed, and it serves a hidden agenda that is not in the best interest of the students. Children receive education or indoctrination largely depends on the wisdom and health of their parents. If the parents are wise, the children receive education, and if not, they receive indoctrination. The difference between education and indoctrination is significant, as education teaches people how to think, whereas indoctrination tells people what to think. Therefore, parents play a crucial role in shaping their children's educational experience. The education system encourages conformity and obedience, while suppressing creativity and independent thinking. The history of the education system supports this assertion, and Ken Wilber's work provides an in-depth analysis of this issue. The current education system was developed by warlords and plantation owners to control slaves. The primary purpose of the system was to keep children busy so that they could get more work done from the slaves and train children not to be creative or think for themselves. This system aimed to instill obedience and conformity in the children, making them more docile and easier to control. Unfortunately, this same system is still in place today, producing individuals who are not creative or independent thinkers, but instead obedient and conformist. What do you think? Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.